Well, <laughs> nothing like being embarrassed right before you get up. I, I uh, thought that maybe by going and, and speaking somewhere else, if I spoke somewhere else, nobody would know that it was my birthday. I knew people at Quaker Avenue would know that, and I'd get razzed about it. Uh, and you didn't ask. I thought it'd be nice. I'd go ahead and tell you I'm 29. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't look it. I'm, I'm much younger than that. And, and, but I'm happy, I'm happy to be here with you guys. And I wanted to also say uh, quickly, I think Gene was talking about 25 years you guys have been uh, doing stuff. This church had been involved in mission way longer than that. We were barely involved until we took on a missionary as our missionary. That, that, that's, then we got seriously involved. I, that's good. I, I just wanted to make the distinction that you were involved way before that. You guys were way before that. In fact, I guess the mission work in Malawi started in 60, 61, some, 61, and if I'm not mistaken, you were helping printing bulletins and doing all kinds of stuff with that. That I don't even want to talk about how long ago that was. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, That's a. Bill, check. Make sure your your lavalier mic is on. If you walk over to the board, we won't hear you. You're on the podium right now. Okay. I it, I have the green light. Okay. Am I not getting it? You're not getting it. I can hang around here then. I'll try and stay right here until we get something. Or yell, I can try and yell. I've done that before underneath mango trees, so I can practice that. I, need, I have one task I need to do, if you don't mind. I need your participation in this. I told the guys, Richard Oquera and Kennedy Obura in uh, South Sudan, that I was going to be uh, making a presentation here today, and they said that they were going to pray for me. And so if you don't mind, I'd like to take a selfie with us. I want you to, like, wave to these guys. And I'm going to send it to them. And I'm going to send it to them. There we go, right there. Thank you very much. I will send that to them, and they will have that in the morning. Uh, and they will be rejoicing and knowing that uh, we're over here thinking about them and praying about them. I don't know if you realize or not, you probably, if, you're, if you haven't traveled very much and been outside your time zones very much, you need to realize that, that really what we're doing right now here at, at 10 or 11 o'clock actually started, as far as worship is concerned, started in the Far East hours and hours ago of Christians gathering together and worshiping the Lord and having their worship so uh, right now in um, right now it's 8 p.m. in East Africa where I would be. They've already finished the day. They've already worshipped. Uh, they're at home and they're getting ready for bed. And you know, further out toward Hawaii and everything, they're still haven't even probably haven't even gotten up yet and ready to go to church yet. I don't know if you've ever noticed this whole thing about going to the football stadium and a wave starts, you know, on one end and it'll go all the way around the stadium. Well, that's exactly the way I picture Sunday morning on the globe, that it starts in the far east early, you know, in the morning and, it, and the worship services begins and in every time zone then from around the globe for 24 hours, Christians are standing up and praising God around the world in different languages and different nations regardless of what the government says they're doing it and this kingdom is without border and without uh, any kind of restrictions in that sense and I'm so glad that we can do that and be a part of that as far as my name yes uh, uh, Sean Tyler my wife Linda uh, she was a Watkins before that uh, some of these guys here know about the Watkins family I think she was third or fourth generation Church of Christ by the time I showed up. I have to confess, when I first met her, I, I tried to get her to go out. I called her up and I said, on a Wednesday night and said, hey, would you like to go to a movie? And she said, I'm going to church. And I said, you go to church on Wednesday night? <laughs> what? I didn't even know they did that. And I said, wouldn't you rather go to the movie with me? And she said, no. <laughs> But if you'd like to come to church with me, maybe we can have a Coke or something afterwards. So I remember my first Wednesday night service. I sat like this, waiting for, my, you know, waiting for it to be over so I could go and have a Coke. I got it 
I started getting it, though. I started listening, and uh, I would say that she brought me, brought me to Christ uh, in this whole process. You got, a, you got it up there for me, or do I need to do something with this? Ah, there we go. I wanted to show that. My wife and I moved to uh, Kitali, Kenya in 1981 and lived in Kenya for um, probably um, 13 years. And then we moved just across the border, same people group, uh, to Uganda, to Mbali, Uganda, and worked there for 18 years. And so total was 31 years that we actually lived in, in the country. That thing is going ahead of me here. And um, is that set on some kind of a timer? No? It's a, you guys are playing with me back there, aren't you? <laughs> it's doing its own thing there. I don't know what is going on with that. And so what's, what's happening is uh, the 31 years turned us moving back in 2012 here, started teaching at Lubbock Christian University, and then uh, from there, I've been going back every year and staying connected with WhatsApp and other things, and, and we, I, I message daily somebody in Africa and, and or trying to be an advocate for them, uh, be involved in stuff and sending materials and work and stuff. And we'll, in fact, I'll show you something here in just a minute. Forty-two years in missions so far. Uh, I want to be, if I'm not mistaken, your father, I, I tell the story about him passing away, I think, at his desk, working on a sermon for Sunday, and uh, in Spanish, at 80 what? 87. I keep thinking, I want to I wanna go that way. I want to I wanna go out uh, in a way where I'm I just either finished preaching or working on a sermon or something like that. I just, I just, I just want to do that. I want to go out that way. When I say that, I want, it reminds me of the barbecue, a sign in a barbecue place over in Tyler, Texas. It says, when I die, I want to go peacefully, like my grandpa, peacefully and in his sleep. Not like his passengers screaming in fear. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be bad. That'd be bad. I don't want to do that. Don't want to go that way. Well, um, we started working, and we were in Mbali, Uganda, uh, and we were, it's 2003. In 2003, we were sitting down, and our, finally our mission team decided they would make a decision to have a mission statement. Think about that. We'd been working there for several years and never really had a mission statement, and so we wrote one, and we said, we will work and try to uh, evangelize bring Christians in, form churches, do discipleship training, leadership training in Mbali and around in every direction for as far as the Lord leads. Because I, I had seen missionaries before say, well, I'm only going to be here another couple of years. Even though that door is open, I, I'm just not going to go through that. Or, well, we just don't have the money for that. So, and they would, they would, what I would say is kind of squelch the spirit, the movement, closed the door of opportunity and they wouldn't do it. And so we said, we're going to dream big. We're going to dream big. Uh, it's, it's William Carey, one of the early, early missionaries in the 1790s that said, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. And so we decided that we'd do that. So we said, as far as the Lord leads... Within a few months, we got a phone call from somebody, Al Hamilton. He was working in South Sudan, Nimali. He said, we are uh, getting kicked out of the country. Uh, he was part of a group called uh, Voice of the Martyrs. They had taken over a hospital there in Nimali, and they had failed miserably at being able to upgrade it. And so the government kindly asked them to leave. He had been there, started a church, beginning some discipleship work. He knew of us, and he said... I hate to leave this work in such infancy. Would you be willing to help? Well, after making our statement of go as wherever in any direction for as far as the Lord would lead, we felt like the Lord was tapping us on the shoulder and, or, or hitting us with a Bible and say, go, go do it, go do something. 
And so we decided we'd do that. And so I, this first picture here, if you'll look to see where that arrow comes down, right on the end, we were, in, we were down by those little signs on the, on the far bottom right. And we got a call to go to right there, right where the, it dips down a little bit in South Sudan, uh, right there on the border of Uganda and, and uh, South Sudan. He was asking us to go there. And so we decided we'd do that. We came back in the fall of 2003, talked to some folks, raised just a little bit of money, and then we went to, um, to South Sudan. And we started in 2004, we raised a little bit of money. This thing's gonna wrestle with me this whole way. Does it have a, a pause on it? I'll see if it stops. Maybe you just take, take it back there, okay? We decided that what we would do is we'd raise a little bit of money in April of 2004. We sent two Kenyan evangelists to go and work at that place. I'm not ready to go yet. <laughs> Did my wife ask you to do this? <laughs> you guys are giving me a hard time for this for no reason here. So... Um, Anyway, so we, we sent these two guys up there. Now, if you remember, uh, South Sudan hadn't been separated from Sudan yet. I'm going to, why don't you just turn it off or something? That's a, a frustration there. It's just going to keep going here. There you go. Um, work was limited. South Sudan was trying to fight for its independence against North Sudan. And the roads were mined. They had mined them. They had cut out all of the, 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 the uh, bridges. They had blown them out in the south to keep the, the north from coming down and invading. It was dangerous to travel anywhere. And so we went up there, and, and we were in, like, IDP camps, internally displaced. People from the central part had come down to the south and were living in, in just huddled groups for safety. We went up there, and you could hear gunfire at nighttime. And there was raiding that was going on, and it was just not always safe. But these two Kenyan evangelists stayed there starting in April of 2004. And we, they worked. And whatever limited capacity they could do, they went and they started churches. And they started visiting, and they baptized people, and they uh, started about 30, 34 churches in that area, which is amazing, among refugees. Well, in 2012, uh, a church in Joplin, Missouri, came alongside us and said, we'll help. In fact, we'd like to send a couple of families over there. And so they sent uh, some missionaries, and we said, wonderful, that's great, we'll just do that. And uh, I said, come on. In fact, you know, we'll just be glad for you to take the lead in this and continue on with it. Well, they went up there, they set up a couple of really nice uh, buildings. They put in a couple of houses. They added a couple of other things on the property. They lived there for five years and then they went home. And right there I want to say something about 25 years. That's a rarity. Among churches today you can hardly get a church to agree to do a long-term commitment on any kind of mission stuff. They'll, they would rather write a check, instead of giving $100 a month, they would rather write a check for 5000 and say, no more commitments. And that's not, that's not the way it should be. You guys coming in and, and being solid for 25 years, wow, that's, that's a rarity in this day and time. This church stand five years and then left. And uh, so they left and went back. Well, they continued to kind of, uh, by remote control, help these guys. And so I stayed out of the picture until the end of 2022. And then 2023, they said, we're going to just completely pull out. We're going to pull out the funding that we're giving to it and, and go. They were giving half of the salaries that we were giving half. They were giving half. And all of a sudden, uh, they said, we're not going to do it anymore. I was getting ready to leave in May and go, and I was hoping to visit these guys. And, and they said, we would encourage you to just stop, close it down, and, and pull your guys out. I just, I just couldn't do that. 
I just didn't feel like the Lord was telling us to go. Not when they're working in refugee camps. I remember Rwanda and the genocide that happened in 95. And the, a lot of people were killed there. The Hutu and the Tutsi fighting together. And you know what? A lot of missionaries left the country. And several years later when they came back, the question that the Rwandan people asked was, where were you when we needed you? That, that horror, I just, couldn't, I, I just couldn't imagine us stepping out at a time when this, this new country, the newest country on the planet, was wanting and needing our help. Oh, so I came to this church and asked, can you guys help? It's, I mean, I'm getting, gonna, we're going to be in a situation here to where we're going to run out of money. Quakers doesn't have enough money left over to be able to carry that load for a, a long period of time. And um, I had to go over to Africa to say, to tell these guys, we're either going to have to shut down or continue on. In faith, though, we want to go forward. So in 2023, we took back the reins of this, this work in South Sudan and been raising funds for these two guys, Kennedy and Richard Oqueta. I, I, I have, I, I'll try to picture here, see if it works. You got to, can you do the next one real quickly? Right there. I did a Google Earth. See that property there that all the, the trees, every tree on there we planted. It's about nine acres of land. You can see the two, two big, nice church, I mean, houses down on the bottom part. Then we have a church building, some other houses. We have a dental clinic and eyeglasses clinic. Uh, all the, 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 those clinics are not functioning right now. But that whole property right there, we dug a well. It goes down 250-something uh, feet to get water. And we have a tower that works and it supplies water. We have to do our own water. And we did electricity on solar packs, uh, solar panels for a long time uh, there. That's, that's what it looks like. And then I wanted to go ahead and show the next foot picture too. This is the building, the Anzara Church. If you notice, it's about 30 feet wide, 50 feet long, and it, it's completely open on the sides. It's so hot up there that they, they don't even put windows in it. It just stays open for air, air all the way through it. Anyway, it, it worked. They did it. And then show Richard and Kennedy, the next one there. Richard, and, Richard Oqueta is in the, on the left, Kennedy Obura in the middle, and then, then that handsome fellow that's 29 is standing there <laughs> on the right. There's a picture I took of them in the uh, first part of June of this year. Well, I sat down with them and said, let's pray, and in faith, let's make a plan. What would you like to do? If the money is there, what would you like to do? Well, the first thing they said is, is that we need to update our registration. Can you show the next slide there? I didn't realize it, but uh, that other mission team had not renewed our registration. We had to renew it every year um, and uh, in order for all of our churches and all of our people to be going out for our work permits and everything for all that's going on, uh, they needed to renew it. They hadn't renewed it, and they hadn't renewed it since 2017. And so they said, well, to legally be here, we need to re-register re that. So. Uh, we gave, we raised the money. Quaker sent some money up there and, and sent them up there, and they were able to get this new registration. With that new registration, they were able then to open a bank account in that name. We could send money directly to them, which really made it a lot easier for us to be able to get there. And they said, if we're going to do that, we also need to start visiting the churches. But before we go to the churches, we need to print some baptismal cards. That's the next one there. And baby dedication cards, those are the ones on the left, and then the one on the right is a certificate of registration for the churches. See, South Sudan wants to know, they don't want just anybody gathering up together. They want to know that you are in some kind of a registered group of some kind, uh, and they want to know uh, whether or not you are legitimate or not. And so our churches were begging for some kind of a registration to show that we are legal in the country. And so they've been handing those out the last little bit. You may think it odd, baby dedication cards. You ever heard of that? 
it, it's kind of interesting. You know, they ask our children, they ask, they bring the children forward and we pray over those children. But think about this for a minute. When you're in a country where the majority of the children are born at home or in the bush rather than in a hospital, and the government really isn't functioning very well, what kind of legal paperwork do you have? You really don't have anything. And so what happens is the church will cr print out a card and you'll put the name of the child, the parents on it, uh, what you, what, when the date was that they were uh, prayed for, and uh, it'll have the evangelist certificate, uh, signature on it. It may have the chief certificate uh, uh, signature on it. And all of that's given, and then they'll give them out to the children. And they function basically as a birth certificate in a place where it can't be gotten any other way. Same thing with the baptismal cards uh, if they're older. And so we printed a whole bunch of those and sent them out. And uh, so they would go out, and they started visiting churches and going around and handing out these registration, certificate of registration for the church, baptizing, preaching, and, and everything. Go ahead and show them another picture there. They, uh, I got this one just a couple of days ago. Mark is one of the evangelists, and he was baptizing in South Sudan in, in Torit County. Uh, and uh, he sent me a picture of that telling us that he baptized nine, nine people on Thursday, uh, this week. Nine people in South Sudan there. And then the next one there is a picture of all the people getting their, their certificates. You can see all the people, they're so happy, they get their baptismal cards. And of course, Kennedy on the right, on the right there is uh, giving out a baby dedication card. And he's holding a baby down on the bottom left corner of that picture. Well, after we did all of that, then we decided to buy some solar kits too. We talked about solar kits. Let's show the next picture there. I forgot. I needed to say something about Elegu. They started a new church. There's no longer 34 churches. There's now 35 churches. They just started another one uh, in the last four weeks or so. And that's a, that's a picture of the church after they did 34 baptisms. They, they taught for four days, baptized 34 people, started this church. And they sent me a picture of all those folks outside. And I thought that was pretty cool. And there you go. It's just started on its own or you guys moved me. I want you to know how hard it is for them to get to some of their places. I told you about bridges out. You can imagine what you're doing is you're driving along, you want to get to over to a church that you know about in the next county, and you get to a place like this and the road's out. And then you have to figure out, how do I get to it? Where, where do I have to go? Where can I cross this river? Where's the place where I can do that? And, and imagine trying to travel in a, in a place like that, the way this group is doing that. And then one more, and that'll be the, if you can punch the button, we bought some solar kits, solar-powered uh, projector kits. And I have one over here. I wanted to show you that. They are, they are a compilation of things that were put together by Good News Production International in order to show videos, the Jesus film and other things out in villages. And it's a little bitty powered projector. I'm going to get over here and yell for a minute, okay? <laughs> See if I can do this. It has a little bitty projector this size right here. It's not very big at all, but it has a tremendous lamp on it, and I have it tied to a speaker system, and you can charge this thing. It has a battery that you can plug into it and charges those, and you can plug that into solar panels, or it has cables. You can plug them onto the battery of your car. Or you can, if you're in a place where there's actually electricity, you can plug it into electricity and charge it. It has a little bitty 32 gig SD card in it, will, which will hold eight hours of a video. And uh, I wanted to show you just real quickly what it looks like as it sets up. It's, it has a tremendous amount of light that comes onto it. And uh, they, they will show this out of the villages on a, a white sheet, uh, especially at nighttime, and uh, I'm going to go to videos, and I even have a picture, I didn't put it in, 
One evangelist took it out with him. He forgot the sheet. <laughs> and he's thinking, now what am I going to do? I'm out here in the village. The whole group of people have gathered together. And as he was thinking about what to do, a white cow walked by. <laughs> what? Seriously? <laughs> they got the white cow, staked it up, put grass in front of it, and they projected the Jesus veil on his belly. <laughs> The Lord will provide. <laughs> I got a pic I have a picture of it. I forgot to put it in. So anyway, uh, I thought that I would uh, give you an idea about how well it sounds. It might be good if I turned it on. This is the Jesus film. How great is God, exalted in power, majestic above all. The heavens tell of his greatness. The skies display his awesome craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak. Night after night they make him known. In creating the heavens. That's a good thing not to do. I'm the cow that, uh, that moved. Anyway, you get the idea. Good sound system, isn't it? Yes. Could you hear it okay? Yes. Isn't that amazing? And you can put that on a white sheet, carry it anywhere. It all fits in a little bitty box. And uh, we... Thanks to some generous donations from this congregation, we're able to send three of those over there to South Sudan. They got them in August. Here's a picture of Kennedy and uh, Richard showing 13 evangelists uh, how to use these things, how to set them up, how to select the videos, how to uh, maintain it, work on it, keep it good. Uh, and uh, safe, and then also to fill out a form. We want them to tell us the date, where they were, what they showed, and how many people came and, and watched something with them. And so they started sending them out. Mark, the one who sent me the picture there of the baptism, he had shown the, the, the Jesus film somewhere, and then afterwards he baptized the nine people from it. These three, uh, 13 men come from three different regions, South Sudan, North Central Uganda, which is the same tribal group, and in the refugee camps. <clears throat> we currently have eight churches in refugee camps, South Sudanese refugee camps. And when I say refugee camps, uh, they're small camps all huddled together, 250,000 people. 250,000 people in these refugee camps without electricity. And so you can imagine what kind of interest might be if they're going to be showing a video uh, at somebody's place down there at a church. And it's, and it's working there. So we've got, we've got that. Just in the last week, I know of nine baptisms at one place, six in another, and seven at another church. That just happened recently. Uh, their records, they sent me a report at the end of the month. They, they uh, figured 109 baptisms in October is what they did. And they visited 17 of the churches in north central Uganda. Uh, let's see what the next one is, the picture you've got. There you go. Here's a picture of them doing this. This is at Pangia, Pangina, and that was one of the churches. And then another one, I think I have another one of it that way. Yeah, there's another picture of that one. That one's the one in Torit. Uh, the, where they were showing it up on the wall. Uh, that's If you can see the picture very well, then you know John the Baptist is talking right now in that video. Well, uh, besides all of that, we've been sending them around to the churches. They wanted to go out and visit. So we uh, helped them get the, the solar kits, get the printing done, and then sent them some money to be able to travel around. And their goal is to visit three different regions, South, South Sudan, North Central Uganda, and the refugee camps, 
they want to visit one section every month. And so for three months, they'll be out visiting all of the churches. And they want to do that two times a year. So six months out of the year, they want to be visiting all of the churches. In February, June, and November, they want to be able to hold leadership courses in Nimely. And uh, they figured it would cost $300 for one person to take 10 courses, which is cheap as far as basically food is what it is. And so Quaker Avenue just did our fundraising for it, and we were, that would be a total of 9000 I'm happy to report we raised $11,500 and were able to do that. And so we said, make the plans, figure out the 30 people you want to do, go ahead and plan for February, and we'll start doing those leadership courses as well. So they'll do those three months that way. Six months of that, that's nine months out of all of that that they're doing uh, in those places. They're doing something else you might be interested in knowing. I got from Kirk, I finagled out of Kirk Hayes, 38 courses from South Houston Bible Institute. All of the material, teaching material, the questions, the grading keys, the, the tests, all of that material and asked for permission to let these guys start a portable Bible school for anybody who could read English. And Kirk said yes, he would love that. He loved the idea that those courses, a lot of them taught, uh, written by B, I think, probably in this. And uh, so they went. Well, Kennedy and Richard report to me at the end of October that they already have 20 church leaders signed up and have got the first three courses of materials that they're working on. And so I just want you to know that South Houston Bible Institute now has students in South Sudan. And that's a wonderful thing, too. They're sending us a monthly uh, dashboard report, and I'll be glad to share that with you. I'm getting reports. I've been sending them, I think, to a couple of you here at church, and, and uh, I hope they're sharing those with you. And I'll try to send you also the monthly reports that we're getting from them, uh, uh, kind of what I call a dashboard. I'm asking them things like uh, churches you visited, people you've contacted, baptisms, any new churches, uh, courses taught, I'm just, just everything I can think of, what to do about it. Uh, what's the next picture? I think I have a picture of a, yeah, I wanted to show this Bible. <laughs> it actually had a regular cover on it, but he carried it so much, and the, the, the outside part of it came off. And so he went down to an a office store place and got this really hard plastic you know, like a folder, and he cut it and then had a guy sew it on and, and uh, to protect his Bible, and he's been carrying that for several years. That's going to be my next project is to see if we can get some money over there for some Bibles and, uh, and some iron sheets for some new churches that are going up. That'll be the thing. What I really wanted to just tell you is, is thank you. I think that without your intervention, what's happening here and this week and the baptisms that were done and the seminars that was done and the showing the, the, these films and, and everything that's going on, it would not have been happening. It would not be going on and these men would probably have gone back home. I don't know if you re recognize the significance of that. A new church, a new church has started. Look at all the people that have been baptized just in October. There's a lot that can be done. You know, we talk about technology in the modern, modern world and everything. But the truth is, is that today we're more connected with people around the world than we ever have been. And the great thing about it is, is that you can right here, and I know you do this, I know you seek to reach out to your community. But you don't just do your own community. You make a difference in a part of the world that's thousands of miles away. You're making a difference there. 
You're making, you're making an impact in a refugee camp of people who are not in their regular home, and they're hungry. I tell you, Richard and Kennedy went to them uh, a couple of months back, and they said, okay, we're going to do this Bible study with you. Thank you very much. Now we'll come back in a week, and we'll do lesson two. And the people in the, village, the refugee camp said, why next week? What about tomorrow? We don't have anything to do. Why can't we study tomorrow? Boy, I wish we were all like that. I wish we were all willing to, to study the scriptures that much. I don't want to talk too long. I have a report here with me uh, uh, from them. I would love for you to come up and see this, uh, this uh, solar pack. It's an amazing thing. If you have any questions, please uh, let, me, let me answer as much as I can. My main task today is to say the work is healthy. The work is thriving. They are baptizing people, preaching, teaching, giving out these cards, blessing those churches, and you have a major hand in it. And that's what I wanted to come and tell you is, is that I don't think you realize that. You, you, you don't know that. But I am a witness to it. I get the pictures. I get the videos. You guys are having an impact. Right here in Amarillo, you're helping refugees, South Sudanese refugees. That's a cool thing.